In this video you will be presented with a detailed tutorial on how to create a full-fledged game called Tic-Tac-Toe. Using the Python language in the Pygame library, we will create this game in the simplest and most efficient way, so sit back and let's code it. So for the new project, install the Pygame library, for this, in the terminal, enter the command shown on the screen. After that, we need to import the Pygame library, we also import the system module in the random number generator. And then we will create the main application class in which we will define the event check method and the application launch method. Don't forget to create an instance of our game class and call this run method. Next, we determine the size of the window and move on to the class constructor. Here we initialize the Pygame submodules, based on the size of the window, create a screen surface for drawing and an instance of the clock class for setting the frame rate. In the check events method, we will check for an exit from the application and when this happens, we will correctly exit our game. And in the run method there will be the main application loop in which we will call the check events method, update the rendering surface and set the number of frames per second. And if we run the program, you can see a black window of the selected resolution. So, all the main logic of the game will be located in a separate class with the main run method. We will create an instance of this class in the constructor of the main application, and through the run method we will call the method of the same name on this instance. Let's run the application and make sure everything works correctly, but to go further we need to draw three simple images. The first image will be our playing field, it will be a square field of size 3 by 3 cells. In addition, we need to create images that will be cross and zero symbols, and as you can see, it is very easy to do all this in any graphics editor. After we have made the images, we need to place them in the project folder, for example, I have them in a folder called resources. So in the class constructor, we will take an instance of the main application as attributes, and then write a static method to load and scale our images to the required resolution. And now, using this method, we will load the image of the playing field, while you need to specify the path to the image and the size of the resolution for scaling. And in order to display it, we will create a draw method in which we will put our field on the drawing screen. It remains to call the draw method from the main run method and, as expected, now we can see the display of our playing field. Now you need to determine the size of the cell, and it is obvious that it will be three times smaller than the playing field. Then, Based on the size of the cell, we load the remaining images for crosses and knots. And now I would like to tell the main idea of the implementation of the game. Our playing field will correspond to a two-dimensional array, it will initially be filled with infinity values. Further, we will take as a rule that the number 1 will mean a cross, and the number 0, respectively, means a knot. Then it becomes obvious that by alternately filling the array with 1s and zeros, this will ensure the correct operation of all game logic. So we will choose a short variable name for the value of infinity and for convenience we will need a two-dimensional vector. Then let's define the above-mentioned array corresponding to the playing field. And by the way, we need to determine which of the players will go first and we will make the choice of the player using a random number generator. Now we need to write a method with which we will display the gameplay. Here we will iterate over the game array and where elements are not equal to infinity we will display them as crosses or knots depending on the value of the element. Let's call this method from the general draw method, and let's run the program to check for errors. As you can see everything works correctly and move on. And now we will write a method for launching the main game process. If we divide the coordinates of the mouse position by the size of the cell, then we get the indexes of the array element for the cell over which the mouse cursor is located. So if the left mouse button is pressed and the value of the element in the array for the corresponding cell is equal to infinity, then we write the player's move to the array, that is, 0 or 1. And then we will change the player by the operation of logical negation. Let's call this method from the general run method and look at the result. So we see that the correct gameplay is happening, but initially it is not clear who goes first, a cross or a knot. For simplicity, we can display information about the current player as the caption of our window, so we will do this as a separate method. If we run the program, we can now confidently say whose move is first. But as you can see, now we need a mechanism to stop the game or determine the winner in the game. 
In this case, we need an array of indices for each line being checked, it is obvious that for a line we mean a set of three cells and as you understand, we will have eight such lines. In addition, we define variables for the winner and the number of steps taken in the game. So, to check if we have a winner, in a separate method we iterate over the array of indices for all lines and find the sum of the elements for the current line. And if this sum is equal to zero, then knots win, and if the sum is three, then the winner is a cross. Then, when clicking with the left mouse button, we will enter a check for the presence of a winner, and if there is none, then we will count the number of steps and call the method for checking the winner. If we start the game and try to collect a winning line, we see that the game has stopped and it is impossible to take the next step, but so far this is not very informative. So here I propose the following, if for convenience we define a variable for the center of the cell, then we can make the coordinates for the line of the winner from the first and third pair of indices, but for this we will reverse the indices to match the XY coordinate system, then multiply by the size of the cell and add cell center. And to draw this line, we will write a method in which we check for the presence of a winner and use the standard pygame function to draw lines. Now do not forget to add a call to this method from the general draw method, and let's start the game. So let's try to collect a combination to win the game, and as we see the line of the winner is displayed as intended. We check again, and now I propose to implement a restart for our game. Implementing this is very simple, let's return to the main application class and write a method for a new game, that is, when it is called, we will recreate an instance of the tic-tac-toe class. And we will call the new game method, for example, when you press the spacebar. Well, now you can check again, and as you can see, when you press the spacebar, the game will restart. By the way, for more information in the window caption we can display information about who became the winner, and also in the case when the number of steps is equal to 9, we can say that there are no winners and restart. And let's make sure everything works correctly again. If someone does not like to display information in the caption of the window, then for greater effect, you can display the inscription about the winner on the screen using Pygame. To do this, select the font and its size. Then, in the draw winner method, we render the text about the winner, and apply this inscription with the blit method to the place we need on the playing field. Let's look at the result, and we can say we got a pretty nice and complete game. And by the way, we made this game so that it is fully scalable to any resolution. For example, let's choose any number for the window size, and it can be seen that the proportions for all elements of the game are preserved in perfect order.